Although you can certainly use the lower level API provided by Microsoft in ASP.NET 4.5, there's another option that's available through NuGet. So if we run off to references and say manage NuGet packages, we'll go to online and we can search for WebSockets. Now if I do that, you'll see Microsoft WebSockets. Now this is a wrapper around the lower level functionality that just makes it a lot easier. In fact, it makes it look a lot like the client side code you would write. So let's go ahead and install that. And now we should have a DLL called Microsoft WebSockets. You can see right there. Okay, so the demonstration here is gonna use the same client side code. I am gonna comment out the line that updates the client because in this case, we're gonna have the server return some information when the client connects. So right off the bat, you'll see that we're gonna call WebSocket Server 2. ASHX. So before we did this WebSockets 1, uh, the first one, which is the lower level API. Now this one though, is gonna use this Microsoft.web.WebSockets namespace. Now that's available in the DLL that was downloaded from NuGet. Now we're gonna check is WebSocket request available. If it's true, we're gonna call accept WebSocket request, but instead of passing the func, which took a special type of context for the WebSocket and a task, we're gonna pass in an instance of a class. And this is our Microsoft WebSockets. So if I come into here, you'll see that we inherit from a class called WebSocket Handler. And if we go to the definition for that, you'll see that's in the assembly again that we got through NuGet. Now this has quite a bit in here we can use, and as I mentioned, it really mirrors the air open message type of close events that you'll see on the client. You'll see that we have some virtual methods here, on close, air, message, couple of those, and open. So this makes it much, much easier to check those, and we just call send anytime we wanna send data out if we'd like. It also provides a WebSocket collection now what this does is I may have a scenario where I wanna keep all clients in sync. So let's say that we do have like a chat room and as one chats, it shows up in the other's message queue and as they chat, it shows up in the other and it keeps it all in sync. Well, this WebSocket collection, which again is also in this Microsoft Web WebSockets namespace, it'll allow us to automatically broadcast to all clients. Makes it really, really easy. So what we're gonna do is override on open. And we're gonna look on the query string for a chat name. Now right now, we don't have that being passed in. So if we go back into our client, go to the URL, you'll see that we're just calling WebSocket Server 2, but we're not really passing anything. So let's say chat name equals, and I'm just gonna say Dan. Now that is gonna hard code it for all clients, of course, but for this demo, that'll work. So now let's go back in, and now we're gonna grab that. We're gonna add the client that called in, that would represent this, into our client collection here. And then we're gonna broadcast, hey, name, whoever it was, has now connected. And of course, that's gonna say Dan every time, but that could certainly be changed. Now, anytime a message comes in, we're gonna broadcast it out to all the clients. So we're gonna do a little formatting and say, you know, Dan said, and then whatever the message is that was passed right here, using the standard string.format, and anytime someone closes, we're gonna broadcast that out as well. Okay, so if we come back in to our client now, we're calling up in, we're gonna pass our chat name and everything should be ready to go. So I'm gonna run Chrome this time and show you that we can do WebSockets here. So we should get a little message, Dan is connected. Now let's go ahead and grab this URL and let's create another tab and Dan is connected. We should have that here because they're the same name. Now let's say, Hello, how are you? Now that echoes it back to ourselves, but we also get it over here. And then likewise, I can say, I'm fine. Send it, come back over to here, and you can see we now have a little chat room type of application going. So that's an example of the higher level API that's available through NuGet and it provides a way to work with multiple clients in a much easier way and even broadcast messages out to all of those clients.